So the 1920s was clearly a time of social conflict in the United States. And as we go through the notes here in this video, we're going to talk about a number of different issues in which these conflicts emerge. First is with regards to gender roles in American society. The 1920s saw a new morality for women. And women's roles changed dramatically after World War I. And this happened for a number of reasons. First of all, they could vote. As a result of the Progressive Era fight for women's suffrage, women were given nationwide the right to vote with a constitutional amendment. Also, they were a larger part of the American workforce. Now that they had involved themselves in the economy during the war, uh, they used their money that they earned in the workforce to attend college and to get an education. And also they were given more freedom and independence because of the development of the automobile. So all of these things dramatically change the role that women play in American society and how many women view themselves as participants in American democracy. So you have this flapper image that emerges and the word flapper, there's a few different um, ideas about where the, uh, the term comes from, be it from um, a particular type of boot women wore or dances that they did. Uh, but during the 20s, many women began to use their status, their new status in society and express themselves in different ways uh, in videos uh, such as uh, silent films or in Hollywood um, or out at clubs um, or that sort of thing. You see this total change of what is acceptable behavior for women and they're becoming more expressive than they had been traditionally. And so there's a series of images that talk about or show the changes in dress and changes in fashion. And this is a role that is also dramatically changed by the development of the automobile, which is now becoming more and more available towards both men and women, which gives them more independence, more autonomy um, throughout American society. In class, we're going to take a look at a reading from F. Scott Fitzgerald in which he portrays a new image of women, the image that changes uh, perceptions of how women behave or, or act in society and catches many men off guards. So we're going to talk about this issue in class. And we're going to do a reading which highlights these specific topics. In addition to women, there's also another issue, another change, and another element of progressive era reform. So with women, you had women getting the right to vote. And when it came to alcohol, right at the end of World War I, prohibition was passed and alcohol was banned. And so this is another thing that shows a change in society in the 1920s. So in the 18th Amendment, you have the banning of the manufacture, the sale, or the transportation of alcohol. And the Volstead Act, which is a law passed by the federal government, gave the federal government the power to police these laws. Oftentimes, laws are policed by local police forces or state police forces. In this case, the Department of Treasury in the United States federal government is going to be policing prohibition and the enforcement of it. And so throughout the country, you have a real tension between those who wanted to continue drinking alcohol and the government forces which were trying to raid bars, raid establishments that were creating alcohol, speakeasies, etc. So the truth is people are not going to stop drinking alcohol because of prohibition. People are going to work around these laws. Bootleggers are going to illegally produce and distribute liquor and speakeasies are going to pop up where alcohol is going to be sold illegally. And so one of the things that emerges as a result of prohibition is a rise in organized crime. There's now a huge market for an illegal substance, alcohol in this case, and so they're going to realize that huge profits can be made by having a um, underwater market, if you will, a black market uh, for illegal produced, illegally produced substances. And Al Capone is going to be one of the biggest mobsters who made much of his profits off of bootlegging alcohol. And the organized crime is also going to be involved in other illegal activities such as gambling and prostitution or even racketeering where mob bosses would pay police officers not to do their jobs and the mob could require local businesses to pay what they would call a protection fee so that the mob wouldn't uh, go after them and they basically would extort money out of local businesses because the police weren't going to be doing their jobs. One of the other things we need to talk about in the 1920s is the rise of a religious debate. And in class, we're going to talk about these questions, how religion impacts people's daily lives, where we see the influence of religion in our society today, and whether we think government should have any involvement in religious matters. And these are really important questions that we can talk about from a contemporary standpoint 
about how religion is playing a role in American society. But in the 1920s, you similarly had a debate about religion in America. There are differences and similarities between then and now. John T. Scopes became a nationwide figure when in 1925 he broke a Tennessee law which violated, which uh, he broke a Tennessee law which banned the teaching of evolution. And basically, he decided, and he was supported by the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, he decided that he would teach this uh, theory of evolution, which went against many people's religious beliefs, and he would promote the ideas of science over the ideas of creationism. And ultimately, this trial, which became known as the trial of the century, or the monkey trial, or the Scopes trial, really highlights tension in society where John T. Scopes is actually though he's found guilty of breaking the law, he exposes a big division in American society. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about this. There are actually two really famous lawyers who get involved. Clarence Darrow was one of the most famous trial lawyers in the United States, and he ends up being hired to defend John Scopes. And William Jennings Bryan, pictured on the right here, is a former presidential candidate, a former secretary of state, and a fundamentalist and a self-proclaimed expert on the Bible. And he actually is the prosecutor here. And we'll see how these two intellectual powerhouses end up having an epic battle in a small courtroom in Tennessee in which the entire country is watching to see what will be the direction that our nation takes. Will it be towards science or will it be, toward, will it be towards tradition, new ideas versus old ones? And this is an interesting discussion that we'll be having in class. And it was so popular that, um, in fact, the trial had to be moved outside where William Jennings Bryan actually put Clarence Darrow, the defense attorney, on the stand. And they had a two-hour interrogation, which is a very, very unique and unheard of uh, sort of uh, legal tactic that a lawyer took. And it showed that this, the this play was more about theater than it was about anything else. It was about scopes. And speaking of theater, there's actually a very good play, which was made in the 50s and then turned into a movie called Inherit the Wind, which is an excellent depiction of uh, the debate that occurred. Not necessarily the most accurate depiction of the trial, but it's certainly a well-produced play that shows the divisions that occurred in American society, albeit in some ways an exaggerated form. So these are different topics we're going to talk about throughout the course of our unit. We'll talk about women and their changing role. We'll talk about prohibition and the conflicts that occurred over that. And we'll also talk about religion and the Scopes trial in particular.